You need not fear statistics because in this video I will break down correlation and causation using some fun and easy to remember examples. Let's start by addressing correlation. That's the association between two variables and the correlation tells us both the strength and the direction of the relationship between two variables. We're going to start by looking at that direction. In this context, positive and negative do not mean good or bad, but rather positive means that the variables are moving in the same direction. As one increases, the other also increases. When one decreases, the other also decreases. And with a negative correlation, they move in opposite directions. So let's look at some examples to make sense of this. The more water you drink, the more times you have to urinate in a given day. As water consumption increases, so do trips to the restroom. This is a positive correlation. It's not saying that drinking water or urinating are necessarily good things in and of themselves. It's just saying that they have the same, that same connection. Whereas with a negative correlation, it's an opposite direction. When one increases, the other decreases. For example, research has found that the more time you spend on social media every day, the less self-esteem you have. So as minutes scrolling on Instagram increases, positive, let's just say, self-esteem will then decrease, negative. So that's a negative correlation. Another example of a negative correlation would be the number of days you skip school and your GPA. As absent days increase, your GPA decreases. There's also the strength of a correlation. It can be a really strong connection where they're very, very related, or it could be a more loose connection, like the self-esteem social media example. There might be a lot of factors impacting it, so it might have some effect, but it's not going to be the only factor that will impact your self-esteem. Let's look at how these appear on a scatter plot. You can think of correlations as this scale, essentially from one to negative one. The closer to zero you are, the weaker the correlation is. So here in the middle, we have a zero, that's no correlation. As we move in either direction, it becomes stronger. So the closer to zero, the weaker the connection. Here are some examples. This is a perfect positive correlation, perfect negative, and then you know, high, low on each direction. So as you can see with a positive, it goes up that way, and with a negative, it goes down that way. And here's the correlation coefficient, often denoted with the italicized lower case letter R. And that tells us basically how much overlap in variance there is between an independent and dependent variable, sort of like a Venn diagram of two things fitting together. Let's look at some more examples. Imagine the two variables are time spent studying and your test scores on an upcoming exam or quiz. I would hope that there's going to be a pretty strong positive correlation there, that the more time that you spend on studying and reading the materials, watching lecture videos, the better you're going to do on a quiz. What about height above sea level and temperature? Well, this would be a negative correlation, that as you go up in elevation, the temperature goes down. So one more example here, let's say I did a study where I sat in the window at Starbucks and just counted the number of people with umbrellas out and people that were holding their umbrellas walking down the street and then compared that with data about rainfall that day. And say I found that on the days that nobody was carrying an umbrella, it was sunny. But on the days that tons of people were carrying umbrellas, it was pouring. So therefore, if I were to open my umbrella on the sidewalk, that means that it's going to increase the chances of rain, right? Well, not quite, because correlation does not necessarily imply causation. Correlation, again, is that association between two variables, and it looks at that strength and direction of those variables and their relationship, whereas causation is one variable causing the other variable to increase or decrease. Oftentimes people will come to the conclusion because something's highly correlated, that means that it's a cause and effect relationship. But there could be some errors with that. It could not be a cause and effect at all because there's another variable in there that you're not accounting for or the direction is wrong. 
So we're going to talk about how you can ensure causation, but we're going to look at a few more memorable examples first. Correlation again shows relationship. I am in a relationship with my husband, and to borrow from some statistical terms, we associate. We have a strong relationship, a strong positive relationship, and there's a connection between these two variables, him and I. But he did not cause me to exist, nor did I cause him to exist. Let's move to this classic example of drowning and ice cream sales. You can see in this graph here that as ice cream production ramps up, the number of drownings in the US also increases. So could we then therefore conclude that ice cream causes people to drown? Well, not necessarily because there's a third factor, a third variable here that is causing both to increase and that's heat. As it's hotter out, more people eat ice cream, but also as it's hotter out, more people go swimming and therefore more people drown. Interestingly here, there's also a correlation between ice cream sales in New York City and murder rates in New York City because there is a connection between heat and aggression and that as heat rises, aggression increases as well. So it's actually the heat that's causing those increased violent crime rates rather than the ice cream, thank goodness. Here's another graph that I found and this is um, from Harshit Kumar, and this is talking about the divorce rates in Maine correlating with per capita consumption of margarine. I don't really know what to tell you about this one. Maybe comment below and tell me if you know what the connection is here or what the connection might be or what the third variable is. But right, if I tried to say, okay, I'm gonna be a couples therapist and my intervention that I'm gonna do with my clients is I'm going to make sure that they eat as little margarine as possible because that is going to strengthen their marriage. I'm not so sure about that. You have a correlation here, but not a causation. To take another more appropriate social work example, let's imagine we worked at a refugee resettlement agency and you notice that the clients who had more English proficiency were also less anxious about finding a job. I actually had some volunteer experience as well as an MSW internship at a refugee resettlement agency, and I definitely noticed this connection as well. The people who had more English proficiency were less worried and anxious about what their life might be like in the U.S. But let's first look at see and see what we would need in order to prove that this is causal. In order to determine causality, we need to meet these four criteria covariance, order, logic, and having no confounding variables. So let's look at these one at a time. For covariance, that means that the two variables change at the same rate. So in our refugee example, is there a direct connection that every time you learn even one more word of English, you become less anxious? That would mean that English professors and spelling bee champions would be the most serene, peaceful people on the planet. And that's not necessarily the case. So we know that it's not a perfect correlation or a, a total causation. It might be one element of it. Next, we're looking at order. The independent variable has to happen first, and then the dependent variable change happens. This was our problem with the rain example, that and the umbrellas. That was an order issue because the umbrellas did not cause the rain, but rather the rain caused the umbrellas. Another example is the number of houses on my street who have Christmas decorations out in their front yard and the number of days until Christmas. So impending Christmas does cause more people to decorate their homes, but not the other way around, right? So I can't put lights out and make Christmas come any sooner, unfortunately. Then you have to look at logic. Does it just make intuitive sense, essentially? So for example, the divorce rates and margarine consumption graph. Does it really make sense logically to argue that that is the most important factor in the success of a marriage? Probably not. And then confounding variables. I think this is probably one of the most common ones that I've seen in my practice and research. This was the problem with the ice cream example. The heat was the confounding variable, that there was something else at play besides those two things that could explain the connection or the relationship between them. So that's not so bad, is it? 
That's correlation and causation. Thanks for listening.